Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's um, do some prayers before our Wednesday class. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhurva Vaswaha, Tad Savitra Varenayam, Bargo Deva Sedhimahi, Dio Yonaha Prachodeva. Asto ma sadgamya, tamso ma jyotir gamya, mrityor ma amritam gamya, om sehna vavtu, sehna bhunatu, sabiryam karvavai, tejas vinavadhi tamastu, ma vidvishavai, om shanti, shanti, shanti. At the ashram, we have uh, a chart. In Hindi, it says uh, Sampuran Yoga. And the English translation, uh, the heading is uh, Complete Yoga at Glance. Okay. So, if you have looked at that chart, On one side, the left side, the seven steps of hot yoga. And on the right side, eight steps of Raj yoga. Okay. So that is a complete yoga. Hot yoga plus Raj yoga. Hot yoga starts with the body. Raj yoga starts with the cleaning of the mind. Look at all those steps or the parts. On both sides, you find pranayama. Pranayama. This is what I'm going to talk about. Pranayama. In our retreats, we have talked about several kinds of pranayams, benefits of pranayams, which you're all familiar with. Today, I want you to understand the meaning of the word pranayam first. It can be explained two ways. Pran is the energy or the life force. And yam is the control of that energy. That's the way you can understand. So that's why control and regulation of that energy is called pranayam. But then another way you can understand. So this pranayam word can be divided into pran and ayam. Ayam means expansion or rising. So pranayam may be understood as the practice where the flow of pran is made more expansive and extensive. That is pranayam. And then the word pran itself is composed of two words, pra and na. Pra means the first unit and na means energy. The first unit of energy exists in its subtlest aspect in humans and in the universe in its expansion. So there's no qualitative difference between the humans and the universe. Because the underlying principle in both is prana. So that prana is the sum total of all energy that is manifest in humans as well as the universe. In the beginning, there was Akash space. But through pran, the universe manifested. All that is present in the world of sense perception is only an expression of this vital energy. It is the pran that feeds and sustains the mind and produces thoughts. 
so it is uh, related to the mind through mind to the will through will to the individual soul the atma to the cosmic soul brahma all sensations all thing feeling and knowing are possible only because of prana so the science of breath is so important part of the science of pranayama but the world has not yet recognized the importance of the science of breath yet yogis alone know the secret of this science the subject is so vast many talk of the physical health others talk of the soul we talk about the universe and the god but the real mystery of pran remains veiled even though it is pran that sustains the body without its help the body and mind could not exist modern science has done much research on diet on calories vitamins minerals even the mind and its functions are also being studied but it is the breath that links the body and the mind and very little research has been focused here there are many books on the philosophy and religion but few books deal with pranayama why because it must be known experientially oh. only a person who has mastered its practices can explain it thoroughly pran sustains life it enters the body through the food we eat and the air we breathe so in other words vital part of food is pran without which none can live but food contains a grosser quality of pran than does the breath which carries it in a very subtle form so in other words the vital energy contained in the food possible is the white energy contained in the air we breathe there is no medicine known to human beings which can substitute for this white energy it is important to remember though that prana is not the air or the food itself they are merely vehicles for its subtle energy See, just like the body, the body is the vehicle for the act. Regulating the lungs is the most vital process in cleansing the human system. Whenever lungs go into action, an exchange takes place between the pran that is about to be consumed and that pran that has already been consumed. that's why overeating or eating overcooked food disrupts this exchange and the lungs as well as the entire respiratory system becomes irregular even our pores suffer when we regulate the motion of lungs by certain breathing exercises the pores function properly and the tissues and cells become healthy the lungs are situated on each side of the chest with the heart great vessels a esophagus separating them and the air passages leading to them at the base of the lungs we find the diaphragm we all know this from our high school science books the muscular wall dividing the chest cavity from the abdomen 
in the action of the diaphragm, which draws air into the lungs. The diaphragm contracts, pulling air into lungs. When the diaphragm relaxes, the lungs contract. The air is expelled. So control of the diaphragm is the first step in the practice of breathing exercises. The simple practice of deep breathing with diaphragmatic movement is the foundation of the science of breath, which we call pranayama. The air we inhale helps all the systems in our body forms. All those different functions. In controlling the motion of our lungs, we are regulating the exchange in the storehouse of vital energies. Furthermore, by controlling the motion of their lungs, highly accomplished yogis can control their autonomic nervous system and the muscles associated with it. The functioning of pran is the basic principle underlying the systolic and diastolic actions of the heart. The exhalation and inhalation of lungs. The digestion of food, excretion of the urine and the fecal matters, and the manufacture of gastric juices, bile, intestinal juices, and even saliva. So in other words, the whole apparatus depends upon the healthy plant. By controlling the motions of the lung, Because we know that pores play a crucial part in cleansing the whole body. There is a yogic text which is called Tarangni. The Tarangni explains a method of cleansing which is called a prana bath. In order to do this, a person pushes the diaphragm, expelling the carbon dioxide, carbonic acid, without inhaling for some time. And this is done repeatedly according to the capacity of the lungs. But it should be practiced only under the guidance of a competent and accomplished yoga teacher. Through knowledge of the respiratory system, a practitioner can gain control of the motions of the body and mind. That's why this pranayam is mentioned in a hot yoga and raj yoga both. Through the practice of pranayam, a person can shape his or her character and even change the course of the life. For the knowledge of a breath is a subtle and complete way of understanding and regulating the function of the mind and the body. So, links the physical and the mental life. And when this link is broken, it takes place. It was said by the ancient sages, one who knows the science of breath knows everything. And he who knows Pran knows the Vedas. That's why those Vedic mantras, when we are reciting or when we are learning to recite, pranayama is associated with all those mantras. To understand the science of pranayama, it's necessary to consider the nature and the function of the nervous system. Because the nervous system coordinates the functions of all the other systems in the body. That's why all our yoga asanas, they are taking our attention to our nervous system. That's why when we practice even the asanas, we are trying to concentrate on the chakras. And we know that uh, again from our science classes, that our nervous system can be subdivided into central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. 
central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, which is actually extension of the brain. And the peripheral nervous system consists of cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and most of the autonomic nervous system. And these cranial and the spinal and the autonomic nervous system spread throughout the body, forming a network of motor and the sensory nerve fibers. And as you know, the motor fibers carry nerve impulses to skeletal muscles, smooth muscles in the walls of the internal organs, heart muscles, glands. And the sensory fibers carry information from the environment to the brain and the spinal cord. And the autonomic nervous system regulates uh, processes in our body that are not normally under our voluntary control. Processes such as uh, the manufacture, release of digestive secretions, the beating of the heart, regulation of blood pressure, it's not in our control. And further, autonomic nervous system is divided into sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So these two systems complement each other. The sympathetic nervous system prepares the body for emergencies and the parasympathetic support the nurturing functions such as digestion. The biggest single part of parasympathetic system is the vagus nerve. I'm sure you've heard about that. It's also called the wandering nerve. It wanders down from the brain stem and controls most of the vital organs in the chest as well as the abdomen. It contains both motor fibers that exert direct control over the functions of the internal organs, sensory fibers that carry information about the internal environment of the body to the central nervous system. This vagus nerve slows the heartbeat, supervises digestion, brings information to the brain, regarding the oxygen and carbon dioxide control of them. So this science of pranayama is intimately connected with the functions of the autonomic nervous system. And its techniques are aimed at bringing these functions normally considered involuntarily under conscious control. See, body, we know how to move. Mind is extremely subtle, but the breath part of us, the breathing part, even though we are breathing all the time, but if we pay attention to it, consciously, we can regulate it. We can expand it, we can control it. So it's like an underconscious control. That's why the Supranayama is the soul of yoga. All of this can be achieved by regulating the breath and through the breath by controlling the motion of the lungs and most vital step in controlling the heart rhythm and the vagus nerve. So that's how you can bring even the autonomic nervous system under voluntary control. This opens the way for experiencing the higher and the subtler levels of the mind. Okay, see how important it is. It helps the body, but it really takes us towards that subtler levels of our mind. And we know the subtler level of the mind is what? The chit. Highly accomplished yogis can also control the central nervous system so that diseases as muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease can be prevented. 
In other words, by regulating the breath, the various vehicles responsible for conducting their respective duties in the body are regulated. Good health is achieved and the student is led to certain levels of awareness. The ancient textbooks of yoga describe in detail the internal structure of the human body and its functions. And those textbooks, they are written thousands and thousands of years ago. Gorak Sahita, Shiva Sahita, Hat Yoga Pradipika, Gherand Sahita. There are a lot of yogic manuals. Even though yogis did not dissect the human body, their description of the nervous system is physiology. There is, however, one major difference between the ancient descriptions and the modern ones. The yogis did not refer directly to the physical details of the nervous system, but to the subtler counterparts of these physical details. The yogic textbooks, they speak of bodies, or subtler energies, and prana, which is a vital energy. These are consistent with the details of the nerves and the nerve impulses. Okay, so terminology in the yogic manuals versus the modern science books. So the physical nerves and impulses are gross manifestations of the subtler nadis and pran, which were known to the yogis many centuries ago. Similarly, the physical plexuses and the gland centers are gross manifestations of the chakras or spiritual centers, which have been described in those manuals. There are several thousand nadis, of which the three main ones are Ida, Pingla, and Sushushna. Sushushna is centrally located, passes through the Merudanda, which corresponds to the physical spinal column. It originates at the Muladhara chakra, corresponding to the pelvic plexus of the sympathetic system. As it passes through the Merudand, it pierces the Swadishthan chakra, corresponding to the hypogastric plexus, the Manipur chakra corresponding to the solar plexus, the Anahat Chakra, corresponding to the cardiac plexus, and the Vishuddha Chakra corresponding to the pharyngeal plexus. The Sushubna then pierces the Talu. I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the Talu in the mouth, which corresponds to the base of the skull into an ear and still goes towards the edge nasal ciliary and joins the or cavity which responds to ventricular cavity in the physical body. Let me repeat this again. The interior portion goes toward the agya, corresponding to the nasociliary plexus and brahmarandra, or cavity of the brahm, which corresponds to the regular in the body. The posterior portion of the sushushna passes from behind the skull and 
portion that is developed pranayama the realized yogi liberates his soul through the brahm randra the ida and the pingala are on the left and the right side so ida on the left pingala on the right respectively of the merudand they also originate at the mula before the end start from the muladhar chakra they end in the nostril but the sushushumna is the one which really goes all the way up all right sorry about that so the yogic manuals contain detailed descriptions of the chakras which are centers of pranic energy which are represented as lotuses they say these are like a petals of beautiful flowers inside us it's not that the flowers are growing inside but those rays of energy looks like petals lotus petals each chakra is associated with a certain number of petals also certain color presiding deity also in the lowest center the muladhar chakra there is a sleeping serpent like fire kundalini which represents all the latent potentials in human being that energy is like a dormant and with the help of the pranayama we can arouse that is the aim of yoga to arouse the sleeping kundalini and lead it upward through the sushushmana piercing the different chakras to the sahasar chakra sahasar means a thousand so thousand beautiful rays of light at the top of the head this represents the union of the cosmic potency or shakti with cosmic consciousness or shiva this is called the union of shiva and shakti through this final union the yogi achieves self realization liberation from all bondages so merges his individual soul atma with the cosmic soul brahma so pranayam practices are the means to this awakening that is the point i wanted to bring it out today so pranayama practices are the means to this awakening they aim at devitalizing the ida and the pingala and allowing the pran to flow through sushumna instead the yogi then experiences unique joy this joy this bliss is nothing it's just like a nothing in this world can even come close to it everything seems so pale when you feel this joy because you really feel free from the bondage even the bondage of time in a human body the cosmic force or the cosmic pran was subdivided by the ancients see the reason they went through all this so that as human beings as students as practitioners we pay some attention to it on the basis of the functions that pran performs it is through the manifestation of these prans that all bodily functions are possible and can be coordinated we have studied in the upanishads all these names 
in the science books they don't have these names eh? but the yogic texts eh? we know these gudan pran saman apan vyan i'm sure you're all familiar with this gudan is a region of the body above the larynx it governs the use of our senses our eyes our ears our nose our taste gudan pran rules the region between the larynx and the base of the heart and governs the vocal apparatus the respiratory system and the muscles engaged in breathing then saman rules the region between the heart and navel governs the metabolic activity involved in digestion apan has its abode below the navel and governs the functions of the kidneys colon rectum bladder genitals and the vyan pervades the whole body governs the relaxation and concentration of all muscles voluntary and involuntary as well as the movement of the joints and the structures around it this is how detailed information our yogis have given it to us so these are like a main five prans and they talk about the upa prans also when we blink our eye when we have a hiccup when we belch when we feel bloated when we perspire they knew in detail what's happening this body and how to control this also in the process of pranayama cosmic energy in the form of pran enters the body through the vehicle of oxygen remember that when you do that pranayama it's not just only the oxygen it's the energy which is coming through the oxygen then during inhalation it takes the form of vyan it reaches all the cells of the body carries away their waste products because there's exchange going on and during exhalation the force of upon expels the waste products through the vehicle of carbon dioxide the cessation of the movement of inhalation and exhalation and their union is called pranayama because when we are neither inhaling nor exhaling what are we doing we are holding that breath that's called kumbhak the process by which the secret of pran and its control is understood on attaining this union the yogi subjugates his mind and body and grasps the very core of cosmic life a person who practices pranayam properly with full faith sure this body will function better this mind will be calm and can never go through depression or sadness because when we do the kumbhak what do we do at that time <coughs> we are concentrating on the atma okay and there's no sadness there on attaining this union the fear goes away stress goes away the attachment to this physical world goes away so breath is an external manifestation of the force of pran breath is the fly wheel that regulates the entire machine of the body see just like a engine is controlled by the fly wheel that's how this body is controlled physical body also mental body also all aspects of the living machine of our body 
controlled through the prana. If prana ceased to exist, thoughts will never arise. Because the relationship between the pran and the mind is that of the supporter and the supported. It is like the relationship between a flower and its fragrance. A comprehensive knowledge of pranayam is of paramount importance in learning the control of mind. The yogic texts they give a analogy also which helps us to understand the relationship between the pran and other aspects of our being more clear. They say it's almost like a palace. It's a palace of a human body and there are several chambers. There's a king, that is the soul. Then the queen, that is the intellect. Then there are offices of ministers, mind. Then there are bodyguards. They say those are the chief breath. Then there are minor breaths, which are called upaprans. They also guard, like a blinking of the that guards our eyes because all these they perform their duties at main pran's command. So king is present over there and rest of the ministers they are doing their job. So in the government of the human body the breath plays a vital role. Because this breath is the one which establishes relationships between the mind and the body. And after a certain period of time, it finally ceases waking. And when it does, the senses and the body are unable to work. With the passing away of the breath, the occupants of the first and the second chambers. They don't get affected, but they just leave. It's like a soul with a subtle body, it just leaves. But after the breath ceases, the inner organization remains intact. So that means the body and all the sense organs, they are there but they stop doing their job. So when the breath leaves the body, the link between the body and the mind is broken. And the soul, intellect, unconscious mind, they find another place and begin their journey in a new body. So the wise person now, who knows this in detail, the importance of the pran shakti in this body. Just like we know the importance of the food we eat, we know the importance of the water which we drink, we know the importance of physical exercises, we know the importance of other objects in our life also. But this very important aspect of our life, the pran shakti, we don't pay much attention. So that's why the scriptures, they said, the wise man is one who has experiential knowledge of pran. So that means that it's not just a theoretically we got to practice it. We got to experience it. Sure, we need to read the scriptures. We need to listen to the gurus talk about it. But the experience of it will happen only when we practice it. Otherwise, reading the scriptures or listening to the gurus is mere 
of window shopping. We cannot just watch somebody else do it and get the benefit of it. We have to pay attention to this part of our sadhana. Spending enough time and the rest of the day also full for this energy inside us, which is functioning. See, when we are sleeping, the body goes a night. After a while, we are in a dream state. Mind is functioning. Body is sleeping. But then for a little while after that, when we go into Sushupti, the mind rests to Two things never rest. The soul, the atma, and the prana. Breathing is going on. Day and night. From the very first breath we took until the last breath we're going to take. And the quality of our life depends upon the quality of our breath. And the quality of our breath increases with these techniques, which in Hat Yoga, the yogi gurus have told us. There are several techniques. We have to learn those competent yoga teacher. Often we spend too much time into the postures. Not enough time and not enough importance is given to the pranayama. I see that even in modern yoga practitioners. But our ancient yogi gurus, they said no. Without pranayama, if you just do the physical postures, it's going, it's just going to a gym class. That's not a yoga. It becomes yoga practice only when we do the pranayama. And especially when we do perform the yoga asans, concentrating at the then it even becomes a, a better yoga practice. Because we are bringing our mind. When we are joining the mind at a chakra, that subtle part of our body, we are really getting more benefit. So our yogic scriptures talk about prana. So today we don't have time to talk about different kinds of pranayams, but I just wanted you to understand that how important this pranayam is for our body and our mind. Let's stop it here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadai Purnameva Visheshate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.